So, when I'm talking about unwaxing on an automotive grade level up there, what the hell am I talking about, right? This is a comment I got uh, from a friend. I'm not going to say who, because he didn't mean it as harsh as it sounded, but it still needs to be addressed. What am I talking about? Well, okay. So, yeah, everybody knows the waxing. And there have been a lot of problems with people uh, with, the, with the waxing of the barrels. They don't really know what I'm talking about. Well, let me put it to you this way. You see how shiny that is on the inside? Automotive quality is talking air, go. See how shiny that is? Not a drop, not a speck, not a run of wax. Nothing on the barrel. In other words, it's not visible wax. So, like, let's say you got a Ferrari 812 Superfast in Mira Daytona, right? Which is a very beautiful color to get a Ferrari, by the way. Um, also, a color that is one of the five colors used on the La Ferrari Aparta. Very nice metallic black, right? Let's say you wax it with some turtle wax. You let it dry real hard to be white. Not green, white. Now, you can wait for it. You, you can just wax it off. You got a thin little layer. And, and for first coat, that's fine. But for subsequent coats, you want to, like, really make that hard wax. Because all you're going to be doing is if you put wax with solvent on it, is you're just going to be taking off the previous wax. The first coat, however, you can just go wax on, wax off real quick. Well, not so. But and for the sake of time of this video, I will show you how to do it right. You have to have what's called an automotive and wax. The point where it's literally, where what you end up with is literally like an automotive finish. Okay? So, I'm going to take this barrel. Now, this is a um, signature furniture polish from... Um, Vons, it's okay. Not as good as Pledge, though. Okay, but it also it's a little thinner, has less wax in it, but it tends to clean barrels. So let's say in time you want to clean barrels, but you don't want to wax it. You need something that's compatible with 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 Pledge and Teflon. Which Pledge and Teflon? The idea behind this is, of course, it has a very thin layer of dry wax, but not one layer, many, and you ply it over over time. So let's say I'm sitting in my room, I'm just kicking back. You know, I, I'm watching some movie like Terror Vision or, you know, or Blazing Saddles or something. Okay, so I fill this hole up with wax. I'm going to load it into the breech of my barrel. I'm going to fire it out of the bird. Now, this is how I apply wax. And, and you know what? I usually, when I'm talking about coupler, because this is brass to brass, I like to put a little bit of wax on here just to kind of, you know, make it a little smoother. And it does. It, it, it brings down the wear. Like, look how clean that looks. My brass rails look really clean because I, I, I use it. So this makes for a really good cleaner. And what you're going to end up with is you're going to fire it, and you're going to see a whole bunch of liquid just come out of it. Watch. See? Yeah. Okay. So when I take this out, let me open up a window, and you're going to see it doesn't look really shiny. See? It's got little droplets on the inside. See it? Let's see if we can see it. It's really hard with this small screen, really. See, you can see this little little bit of this little run of liquid going out of it. Let's let that go. Now, here's what you got to do. It's got basically a layer of wax just splattered all over it. And I usually do this once or twice, but for the preservations of time, I want to do this just once. Okay, so let's take a sharpie. No, not to write on it. But it, it's, it's an object that has a wedge on the front, and this little hole is deep enough. But so something like this, or I used to have these centrum pills I used to just stuff in there and then throw a 3 dowel through it. There it is. Okay, so this is what professional waxing does. So you want this to dry overnight. For the sake of the video, I'm not going to dry it overnight. Because I try to explain this, like doing once and then wax it, doing it, and it's like, eh, they, people don't get it. Okay, so um, close this up. All right, so here's what I do. So this right here, I'm making the rim of this, because of this foam right here, I'm making this wider than the inside of the barrel. So what this is gonna do, is it's gonna contact the inside of the barrel, and it's gonna wipe all of my excess wax out. So I'm putting it on the breech side, just like real firearms, you wanna go from the breech side, not the crown side, you know? Especially my blasters. And put in mind, brass is softer than hardened steel. So uh, most Glocks, SIGs, Colts, AR-15s, HKs. I like HKs. They're just a pain in the butt to take apart and put back together. Uh, especially with that roller. 
uh, delay system that, that the, the uh, 91 and the SP-89 MP5s have, which happen to be some of my favorite guns. Okay, so here we go. I'm put this down back of this pen, and I'm going to push it out. Watch. One pass. And I use wood, because wood doesn't scratch it. Boom. All right. Now look at it. Now, if this has been sitting around, now look at that, look at that, see? Perfect mirror finish. This is what it should be, perfect mirror finish. If you have any wax in there, it's gonna cause more drag, it's gonna take all your dirt off your darts, it's gonna take all your dirt out of your firing system, and even grease, and it will all clump in there, and you don't want that. What we're talking about is a smooth, as slick, freaking, I mean, yeah, frictionless coating. That's what you want, and you want it as even as possible. Plus, it's not just one coat or two coats. It's like 20 before a blaster even goes out. As a matter of fact, this has probably got several hundred coats on it. Because I will just literally sit in my room, spray it down, fire it, clean it off, I'll put it away. And then the next day or a day or two later, I'll just do the same thing. Well, when I'm not playing, I do this a lot. So I will pick up my blasters like Big Lou, like the Chronomag, like the type, Bird of Prey type you know, type AR, and I will just break it on clay. This is why my brass always looks so clean, because I'm always working on it. And what you end up getting is, I mean, a really great, great, okay, hold on. This is a rubber, this is a silicone-headed dart. And it was used uh, once, so it might not fire that well, but this is a Bird of Prey type LT, and it shoots three and a few per second, so... Let's 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 go, let's go through a cardboard box with this. Watch this shit. Oh yeah, no problem. Just no problem. It would probably go through two layers of box. Yeah, you can see it because what it does two things now with that much wax in it. Number one, or actually I should say three. Let's say three. Number one, it takes all the valleys and grooves and it evens out the barrel. So when you're firing it. You have a very even, even seal. A lot of CPVC, and I was, I was talking to somebody who's working with CPVC, and for plunger tubes too, Ben, same thing, okay? CPVC tends to be an even. What I like brass, it's a piece of metal that starts flat like this and then folds, and that becomes that. And it goes through a die on the inside and the outside to make it seamless. So now you have like, this is why KNS brass is so cool. But you're always going to have the point where, where it seems it's going to have a little value. And I mean microscopic value. It's still there, okay? And you got to have little scratches, this and that. People like Liam Davis uh, will polish them and wax them. And that's cool. Because it, it because even then, you can still have a little bit of fluctuation. And it does even it out. Me, personally, I just... Because I practice firing so much, I just fire it. So it is a good practice. It cuts down on the maintenance time that you need to make... Uh, the barrel acceptable for fire the way Liam Davis does it, Spectre does it uh, but you can just use a ton of wax and just do it itself. The other thing it does is it makes it so the dart when it's going through the barrel and the back pressure is hitting the center of the dart, it's adhering to that surface a lot more even doesn't let air through which makes it so that uh, volume comparison such as 1.7 to 1 um, uh, barrel volume ratio is makes more sense. It makes it more consistent, and you usually start seeing more consistent velocities because of this. And finally, it makes it so the the material that the dart is dragging on is not brass anymore. It is wax, and everybody knows that, especially Teflon impregnated wax, really low coefficients of drag. So you're still going to have the resistance. It's not going to go through perfectly. I'm a person who believes in tight uh, barrels instead of loose barrels. And the reason is, is because I use a, a bomb-proof firing system. Use them above 16, 18K. 14's a rarity. I mean, I have this prophecy as reference that Monkey Mods gave me. Thank you, Monkey Mods, again. Um, and I use this as a reference. a great, you know, 190, 200 foot per second blaster as reference. Just as a reference 14K blaster. Or if I need something that's uh, lower than 100 and, you know, uh, 190, 200 feet per second and for a war. Which usually I'll use a Mauser Fire, but, you know, if I got to use a RAT kind of blaster, I'll use that. And I have used it a couple times. Yeah. Um, I usually have very high velocity, so I go with tight barrels and a lot of coating. Now, of course, the coating is going to make the barrel and diameter slightly thinner. 
means your 503 on the micrometer is going to start looking like 501, uh, 495, 499. But all that does is it makes it so the outside of the darts press up against it. But it is going to make it less able to use for your normal your normal elite darts because they're right up at 500 at outside, and they're going to make them less uh, less usable for like waffle heads. And of course, seal breach you don't use waffle heads. Rebated heads. And, oh, okay. Here's another thing. Another the reason I'm making this video is kind of a little question to ask. Let's get one that is a little more cleaner looking. Okay. Rebated heads. What does rebated head means? Rebated head means this. It means your head is like 11 millimeters in diameter and your thumb is 12, 7 or 13. A lot of people go with 13 millimeter diameter barrels. I go with 12, 7. That's me. That's another standard 13 millimeter. My, uh, my easy nerf chronomatic is 13 mil. Okay. And a couple of my other blasters are 13, but as you can see, the ones I mainly go to war with, oh, yeah, um, Prophecy's 13 as well, um, are indeed 12.7, because most of them are using um, heavily wax-impregnated brass barrels, or even better, like you'll see Big Blue, it, it has a laminate, or, or the Chronomag, it has a laminated swan barrel, where the barrel is casted with the aluminum, and it keeps it from moving when it fires. It's quite interesting. So if you look at, like, let's say OC Nerf's video, where you see the bird of prey fire, you see this blaster, before I shored this up with epoxy. So now this front, so now this doesn't really move at all. It used to move a little because it used to move, but it was a predictable harmonic that you can adjust for it on the scope or a red dot. Um, it makes it so you can look at the chronomag, and the chronomag doesn't move at all. Not at all. Or big blue. It doesn't move at all. And the reason is, is because those are blasters that are made for the barrels to be more fixed reference. This is what bird of praise are made for the barrels to be floating, kind of like a high power, you know, model 700 rifle or something like that. So, and, and, and they do really work really well for high power stuff. I mean, really great. You know, I got, I got to shoot this again before I cast off. And especially since it would be great for my wonderful normal tagline. Let's see. But anyway, this is Chris Cartea saying, don't you go changing or I'll find you. And you'll end up like Mr. Happy here. See? Mr. Happy. He's really happy. He's a happy man. See? He's happy. He's very happy. Well, he's about to have his life shattered. You want to know why? Because I'm about to put a dart through his head. Oh, no! Don't put a dart through my head! All right. So again, don't you go changing, I'll find you. Oh, oh, it knocked over. It knocked over my my lightsaber. Ha 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 ha. Oh, and it missed. Oh my gosh, he evaded life. <laughs> he evaded getting killed. This is not good. Okay, hold on. We have to kill him. We have to kill him. And then he knocked over my lightsaber, motherfucker. Can you believe that shit? Alright, hold on. So let's let's take two of that, huh? <laughs> kind of a bad omen to leave without Mr. Happy getting getting uh, you know a nerf dart lobotomy. So anyway, don't you go changing, or I'll find you. <laughs> and it may look like this. Watch. <laughs> oh my gosh, my aim is terrible. I need better X-ray vision looking through the box. But yeah, he he don't look too happy. No less. Bye-bye.